you like that? It's nice to have our puppet team perform for us today. And uh, all I want for Christmas. How many have ever say, said that in the past? Maybe when you're going up. All I want for Christmas is, and uh, maybe you still do. But you know, Christmas time is not a time to focus on what I want. That's not what Christmas is all about. But it seems like that's what society, especially the, the you know the stores, they, they want to make their money. In fact, uh, they say that it's during the holidays that these stores actually make it or break it. And it's sad, but that's pretty true, right? Is that they're so focused on how much money I can make. And uh, I think um, we got the whole thing all messed up. In fact, it seems like Christmas comes earlier and earlier every year, you know, like they have Black Friday. How many of you like Black Friday, by the way? Huh? I know you, you probably you do. You're probably not going to admit it, right? <laughs> But the thing is that um, I think sometimes we get so focused on making sure that we get the right present for the right person that we just completely forget about really what Christmas is really supposed to be about. And we get focused on the wrong thing. And instead of what I want for Christmas, we should probably focus on what other people would like. You know, the greatest gift of all, of course, and the reason for the season is because of the greatest gift of all. Christmas should not be about what I want for Christmas. Why is it that every time I pick up the clicker, it doesn't work for me? <laughs> what is the Ten Commandments? Anybody remember what the Ten Commandments is? What is it? Louder. Thou shalt. You're not too sure, huh? Thou shalt not covet. Now, what does covet mean? Want. Want? Want what? What others have. What others have. And I think so many times we, um, especially our kids today, and we talked about that in Sunday school, is that you know we're in a in a society where um, there's so many things that we can go to the store and buy. In fact, our kids today really don't know really what they want. They think they want a certain thing because, especially um, if they watch TV. Um, you know, they spend millions of dollars on advertisement. And, and they want to make sure that their product is going to get bought. So that uh, they can make the profit, of course. But the thing is that, why do parents buy these things for their kids? And then in the spring, again, I, I've said this before, is you go to yard sales, and they are still in the box, not even open. Isn't that sad? And the thing is, I, I remember um, just a couple weeks ago, um, there's a family in town here, and I won't mention the name, but they decided that this year, Christmas was gonna be a little different. Christmas was gonna be, you know, because the kids basically have everything they need. Now, how many of you have everything that you really need? I, I do. Now, there's some things that I would like, but as far as need, in fact, I think we have too much stuff, right? In fact, we need to unload our stuff. And, and I, again, I think about, you know, if we were to move somewhere, you know, a lot of people are asking me, well, do you ever think about moving to Hawaii, back to Hawaii? I said, sure, I think about it all the time. But you know what? That's not where the Lord's telling me to go right now. I'm happy with 
the church that I serve. I'm happy with the programs that we do, rock and celebrate recovery. And I don't need anything else. And you know, there's a lot of times people are always asking, well, what do we need? And if you have the right heart, really, if I have a roof over my head, if I have food to eat, and if I have clothes to wear, I should be happy. And the other thing too is, you know, why is it that around Christmas time, we think about, okay, and how many of you struggle at what kind of gift you're going to give somebody for Christmas? Huh? You ever struggle with that? And, and you don't know what to buy because why? They have everything they need. So the next step is to you know, find out, okay, what would they like? What would they want for Christmas? And so they're talking about this one family, and they decided that instead of giving gifts to the kids, this year, and I think it was the kids that thought about this, is that what they were going to do is they were going to have all their Christmas money, whatever was going to be spent on them, they were going to go, to sh go shopping and buy Christmas boxes for Operation Christmas Home. You know, I thought about that when, when I heard this. Those are the things that they will remember never forget. Why? Because the greatest gift that can be given is the ability to give. Think about it. How many of you enjoy giving something to somebody? And watching the expression on their faces when they receive that gift. It brings me more joy when I give something to somebody and they, they really need that thing and, and, and see the big smile on their face. And then when God in heaven decided to give the greatest gift of all, do you not think that he, it brought joy to him to, to be able to give the gift of Jesus Christ to this world? to save us from our sins. To rescue us from the state that we were in. Hopeless, lost. And you know what? That's part of God's character, right? Is to have a spirit of generosity, of giving. So in Genesis, I mean in Exodus, the 20th chapter, we know that as the list of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet. <clears throat> and then in 1 Timothy 6, it says that godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and snare, and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge them into ruin and destruction. Now why is the lottery system so successful as far as what they, the world is view as success? Huh? How many people win the lottery when the lottery comes out? Well, usually it's either one or the, if they share uh, the expense of the tickets, maybe a group of them. Of all the millions of people that buy these lottery tickets. And why do they buy these lottery tickets? Now, some of you might, might buy lottery tickets. I don't need to be stepping on your toes, but just think about it. Why do you buy a lottery ticket? Because you want all that money and you think of all the stuff that you can do with all that money. And a lot of people say, well, I would give a lot of money away to the poor people. I would help people. And first of all, I would pay all my debt, right? <laughs> but the studies have been uh, seeing that when people win the lottery, you know what? They're miserable people. Why? Because all of a sudden, 
when they win the lottery, they have the lost long relatives that start calling them, hi! <laughs> and then they give all that money away, and a lot of times they don't know how to manage their money, so pretty soon they end up broke, broker than they were when they first started. The love of money, right? It's not money. A lot of times people say, well, money is the root of all evil. That's not what the Bible says. It's the love of money because, you know, if, if money was evil, then we wouldn't be taking up an offering on Sunday, right? Bills have to be paid. The electricity has to, the bill has to be paid. Um, you know, there's, there's things that need to, and good things that can happen when we use the money in the right way. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, and some, by longing for it, have worn away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And I have seen people who have come into a, a large sum of money. And you know what? The whole thing about when you have too much and you don't put that in the right perspective, you don't need God anymore. I mean, think about it, right? What is it that you depend on God the most when you need something, right? When you really need something. And, and you know, it's really um, interesting because there's a lot of people in our community that give me a call. And the first thing they say, well, you know, oh, I need some food, or I need some, I need help with rent and all this. And I ask them, you know, what church do you go to? Well, I don't go to church. So, only when you need money, or you need something, you go to God, or you go to the church. Why is it that when we need something, we depend upon God? Why don't we depend on God all the time and be thankful to God for everything that we have Amen. all the time. Amen. Not just around Christmas time, not just around Thanksgiving time, but every day be grateful for the blessings that God has poured out on us. Randy shared that scripture verse from Malachi. Test me in this. That I would not open up the gates of heaven and pour out to you a blessing more than you can have. Can you imagine? Maybe some of you are not receiving that blessing that God wants to give to you. Because you, because you have your, your, your clenched fist holding on tight to what you have. You know what? You cannot receive from God with a closed fist. You have to open it. And as we are willing to give, God will just pour out a blessing on you. Not, not necessarily a material blessing, but the joy that you can have when you follow the principles of His character. When you think about what God has given to us, He gave His all. He gave His only Son, right? So that we can have life. An abundant life. But we cannot receive that unless we are willing. In Philippians, this is one of my favorite scripture passages. And ever since I was in college, I memorized this and I, I thought, I want to live, have this as a model in my life. It says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being united, being one in uh, spirit and mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility, value others above yourself. Maybe this Christmas, if we can just decide that we will put others before our own needs, then we can truly 
understand what Christmas is really all about. Because Jesus himself humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And we should not only look out for our own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have him to everlasting life. What better gift can anyone receive than the gift that God has given to us, his son, so that we can have everlasting life. Maybe more than a physical gift that you can give this Christmas season is to share the gift of eternal life, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the whole reason for the season. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much.